Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our free webinar series. We start with the first webinar. We talk about color adjustment of photos, videos, and 3D rendering. Um, with me, it is Robin Ox. Hello, Robin. Nice to have Hello, you Boris. here. Hello, Boris. Robin is from Picture Instruments, and he is the one who is the founder, the CEO of uh, Picture Instruments, and um, therefore he is the right one to show us Master Match, uh, the newest software from Picture Instruments. And it will be interesting to see in combination with our Spider Checker Photo and other Spider Checker products. And um, yeah, at the end, we will have a little secret announcement. So we will have a webinar of about one hour afterwards you will have the ability to enter all the questions you have. You can do it during the webinar as well. We will stop from time to time, and then we will uh, ask, we will answer all the questions you have after the webinar. So this will be about one hour of webinar, and afterwards up to, let's say, 30, 40 minutes question and answer series. Okay, um, to give you a better um, uh, performance uh, due to the reason we have yeah, at the end of the day, very often a lot of attendees have bandwidth problems. Therefore, I will uh, collapse my camera and uh, Robin, you as well, and I will start right away. Um, you will see it's Robin and me today. I'm Boris from Data Color, responsible for training and support in our company. Okay, so we will have three webinars, as mentioned before. We will start today with neutral matching of camera colors and e-commerce for repro photography. And um, this will be, webinar will be followed by the next one where we have September 19th, which is next Tuesday, where we are talking about matching multiple photos and video cameras and including this with log footage. And um, the last one will be about tips and tricks um, when something is for spider checker or master match. Uh, what are the little secrets and what can you do if something go, goes wrong? That's uh, nothing, no problem. Uh, we would like to prepare this. So another information, all of you, you will have uh, received a reminder email and you will see, receive a follow-up email in a few days. This email will contain also the link for the recording. So it's, uh, not necessary that you write down anything. Okay, let's start. We are on the first webinar today on September 14th. So we have an agenda. We talk a little bit about calibrated workflow and um, then the, yeah, how you eliminate and position the color reference cards. Afterwards, it will be Robin showing us the reference colors and master match software. The question is, if you have still images, what about raw or JPEG? And um, using color corrections in Lightroom and Capture One and applying the color corrections in video programs like uh, Premiere, After Effects, and Final Cut Pro, for example. This is the agenda for today. So you see, we have a lot of things to uh, go through. So therefore, I will do it in a very fast way, a few information about color management. Color management is uh, in general something that is depending on the device always a little bit different. That means a camera works in RGB color space but you have on top always the light situation on location. So you have a lot of things which can go not wrong but can create different colors. Monitor, monitors are not identical. So panel types, the aging process, room light, scanners, if for those who use scanners, have their own light source. And at the end of the day, if you are printing this, or even if you put this somewhere uh, on social media, uh, the output is always different. And a printer brings on top that it works on CMYK. And you have also the paper and the ink that has an impact on the color reproduction. Most of you, will use it, will know this. And here I have a short um, 
yeah, um, documentation of the gamut of the different gamut, you see. And you see, for example, printers have the, the smallest gamut if you look on matte paper. If you have a high-end inkjet paper and you use a kind of luster paper, sometimes you have a color space that can be at the size of Adobe RGB, but not the same shape. That's always important. Therefore, you can say RGB is not equal to RGB, and this is also not equal to CMYK. Okay, so um, we say what happens without color management, and this is something that is important um, because, for example, if you have a monitor that has a color cost, let's do it. You take your images, you take your video, and everything is okay, you did everything correct, and you have the data on your hard disk, neutral. But your monitor shows it with a greenish cast. Okay, what do you do? Because you do image editing or video editing, you correct the color cast. But this was not the cast in the image or in the video, it was the cast from the monitor. Therefore, the monitor looks okay now. And as you have added magenta to uh, co uh, convert the uh, greenish cast into neutral, you have now data that has a magenta um, color cast. And this will be, as a printout, for example, also, of course, a color cast in magenta. You can't do anything against if your monitor is not calibrated and does not show correct colors, all your editing of video or imaging editing will be incorrect. Okay, we have, as I mentioned, the aging process. If you think about monitors, a lot of people say, okay, my monitor is not as, as old, but um, maybe three years old. But if you have a look to the invoice, if you find it, very often you find out, oh, that was five, six, seven years ago. We are humans, we are not good in um, looking back when we have purchased things. And due to the reason we have an aging effect on the monitors, have a look if the monitor has uh, accounted for the hours of usage, um, you will see, okay, this is something that is important. And you have a fading effect because the filters, the backlight, will fade over the years. Okay, again, something important. And we have different display technologies, different monitor types, and uh, that's also something that is important because if you work with somebody else together, or if you have more than one monitor in front of you, colors should look identical to you and of course to all the others. And that's the reason why color management is that important. Okay, at the end of the day, you can calibrate everything, every component. You can have a profile for the camera or a corrected camera. Then you have for the monitor a profile, scanners can be calibrated. Data color does not have um, solutions here. And you have the output and also the printer can be profiled. And this will give you, yeah, a tool which is the ICC to, um, profiles that allow you that the image are shown correct on your monitor, that the image in the printout is correct. That's important to know. Okay, we're to, now today talk about um, input, that means camera still and also video. And um, our newest product is the Spider Checker Photo. You may know the Spider Checker family, but the Spider Checker Photo is um, uh, a handy device. And um, let's have a look. You see, there are four cards inside. That's important to know. And this black here is, yeah, the, the deepest black in reference card you will find on the market. Really helpful. Okay, let's have a look. Um, we have ultra matte targets, that's important. We talk about the ability to match different camera systems, different input devices, to have at the end, uh, at the end one color tone. 
for those who remember the good old analog time, uh, times, you see, uh, you could do everything uh, correct, but using different film material created a little bit of color cost. Okay, good, another point. If you want to see the details, it's also important that the colors are correct because colors also define contrast by this. And for those who do food, of course, the food has to be also correct from balanced from the color in the food photography and uh, as well as on uh, monochromatic motos like, like this uh, papillon. Or also important, and therefore we have the skin tones in here, uh, neutral skin tones. And this is very important because our human eyes, we have very good trained how to look if skin tones are correct or if they are incorrect. Okay, good. And then, of course, for all those who work with brand colors, it's important that these are correct reproduced. This all it can be done when you start with your camera, you have your reference, and we are talking about still, and we are soon talking about video as well. And with Robin, we'll see how we can do it today with video as well as with still images. Robin with Master Match doesn't care about, that's the good thing. So what do we have? We have a compact uh, device, it's robust, it's the Ultramet, that's extremely low reflectance. It's um, a high quality paper, sustainable. Um, we have 64 colors and we have a seamless integration into our applications. And it can be also perfectly used with master image from picture instruments, as you will see in a few minutes. Okay. Spider checker photo, and um, we have used this um, uh, images from Sascha Hüttenhain. And here is something I'd like to point out because this is something you should not do. Please do not touch the color patches, one thing, and do not cover the color patches, but something we are humans, something like this can happen. And this is the reason why I would like to point out for the last webinar on the 27th, where we will talk about what can you do if something like this has been happening during the shooting and you will see it afterwards and you have no chance to redo that shoot, but there will be solutions. Okay, what is important um, um, when you have a reference card like the spider, checker, if it's the spider checker, the spider checker photo or spider checker 24, um, put it, attach it to a tripod or put it on a, on a stable surface. Um, it should be a homogen illumination and the light should come best from an angle of 45 degrees. We always say recommend, recommendation is to shoot in raw and Afterwards, you open the image in Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom, uh, Focus from Hasselblad, DaVinci Resolve, or a master image. Then you have your reference you can start from to make sure colors will be correct. Okay, that was it from my side. And what I will do now, I will hand over to Robin to give him the ability to share his screen with us. Robin, I promote you to be a moderator now so you can share your screen with us and show us the next steps in master match please perfect okay seems you can see my screen yes it's the screen with master match correct okay that's correct um yeah Hello everyone again. Um, my name is Robin from Picture Instruments. Um, yeah, and in this webinar, I uh, want to go to several steps. Um, first, maybe first, I, I make some uh, or give you some additional information uh, about color charts and uh, which topics you should pay attention uh, if you shoot them. Uh, then the second. Uh, point is uh, yeah, the functionality of master match. Uh, there are several functions to 
um, yeah, optimize your results. And even if you have not optimal uh, images, uh, you can yeah, do some tweaks to enhance them. Um, yeah, after I guided you through master match and you understand how to make a color correction in master match, um, I show you how to apply it, uh, apply the correction in Photoshop, in Lightroom and in Capture One. And then I also show you how to apply the same correction in video uh, as an example in Premiere Pro. And yeah, if you want to save some money, maybe be patient until the end and uh, we have some nice gift for you. So yeah, stay tuned and let's start. Um, maybe first, Boris, can I share my camera again? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, is it big enough or is it next to my uh, screen no, share? It's, it's on top. Okay, it's on top. Can I, if I stop the screen share, you see the full camera image? No, that's not possible. Okay, so maybe it's it's big enough. Uh, so I show these uh, color checkers, so the spider checker photo, and also the spider checker 48. Oh, excuse me for the green tones, they are keyed. But if I move them a little bit, you see what means the highlights. If I put it a little bit to the direction of the light, you see the highlights are going over this color chart. And if the highlights are going over the color chart, it changes the color, it, it uh, reduces the saturation. And as you see, the new color checker photo is producing much less highlights than the older spider checker 48. And if you want to be, or if you're on, on location and you have not your light under control. So if you have your light under control, you can position the light uh, as you want. But if you don't have your light under control, a more matte surface of the color charts is better. And let me unshare my camera and show you one example in Photoshop. Here's there are, here you see several color charts which are shot on yeah in the same moment and you see here the the uh spider checker photo has a darker black than other colored charts the only colored charts have a similar dark black are charts which have a glossy surface but a glossy surface it's fine if you have your light under control 100 percent but if the light source is in an angle where it reflects to the camera for example if this is your chart and here's the camera and the light is coming from the same angle as the camera, as the light is reflecting, then you see the light, the light source completely in the, yeah, completely reflecting in the, uh, yeah, in the uh, hundred, uh, in the glossy uh, surfaces. So if you have your light under control, you can, take this one but if you are uh, in on location you don't have control about the sunlight and whatever a matte surface which is very very diffusing is always better in my opinion so if you have your light on the control i always recommend to put it on an angle where it doesn't reflect to the camera then you have more contrast in your color chart as you've seen when i have uh, yeah, shown it into the camera okay yeah. So we talked about recording it and then we can go to master match. Um, here I have some images from an old session, um, but I will now load some, some new photos to show you how it works. We have, in general, we have four sections. One is your reference image. One is your image which you want to match, which you see here to match. And then there is a preview image where you can load any image where you see the preview of the same correction. So the correction is calculated between reference and to match. And on the preview, you see the same difference. And here, the LUT visualization, it's an LUT, yeah, it's a LUT cube. Um, yeah, for everyone who is not familiar with lookup tables, LUT means lookup table. It is, um, in theory, it can contain every color from zero to 255 for R, G, and B. But in practice, um, yeah, we use this uh, 70, 17 steps or 32 steps. So we only take every eighth or every 17th color. And 
this is yeah r g and b are on three axes and this is a cube sliced so the depth is next to each other so you see each color in the cube and you see the difference what what is the load calculation making so at the moment it's yeah this is the color difference which is calculated between the reference and the to match image the to match image originally looked like this and the color correction makes this and this is also the same difference which you can see on the preview image and on the lookup table image the lookup table image we will see a little bit later um, if there are artifacts or problems you will see it here in the lookup table yeah so let's start with a new one um, so with a plus symbol you can load a file or get an image from photoshop if you have photoshop or working with photoshop you can uh, press a button and the selected layer or if no layer is selected so a merged copy of the complete image will be transferred to master match in this case i like to open a photo uh, yeah we had a photo shot from a shoe in a photo machine so i load it and now everything it's looking very curious and ugly the reason is because our software master match calculates everything in real time so if you see i'm moving this color grid it's already changing and it calculates the points to points which are somewhere here totally makes no sense if it's disturbing you can deactivate the color correction and position the four edges to the edge of the color chart and now you see it's not looking correctly the reason is we have here as a reference we have this spider checker photo but we want to have a spider checker 48 on the reference image on the plus symbol you can load an image but we have also put some templates into our software here you see only the template spider checker photo neutral natural and spider checker photo neutral spectrometer we have two different types of neutral ones one is measured with the spectrometer and the natural one it has the same colors the same color hues but the brightness and the saturation it's more adapted to an image which you take somewhere in a studio with some highlights because of the high, um, if you make uh, measurements with a spectrometer then there are almost no highlights measured and it's looking some sometimes it's looking a little bit artificial i can also show you later how to uh, you know, work against that it's uh, looking artificial but having the same colors but at the moment we have only two templates so here is a next to load file here's a template list and to bring more templates to the template list you can either create own templates so you can save whatever you do as a template but we have a lot of templates in our software which you find under the settings so uh, yeah so you don't have uh, hundreds of, of templates behind the plus symbol you can choose some from a list and then you can add them to the list on the left side so as we are working with the spider 48 now we want to go to the neutral ones and yeah i want to add the natural and then i want to add the neutral spectrometer if you want to work yeah, adapt cameras to other cameras or you want to um, have your camera look like a different camera you can also go to uh, yeah, choose from different profiles from different cameras but the topic for today it's uh, neutralizing images for e-commerce for repro photography to have exact neutral colors then you have to choose the neutral ones okay um it seems that nothing happens uh, but as uh, soon as i select uh, a profile here it appears in the list so now we have uh yeah all the spider checkers which we are working today in this list and as we have uh, the spider 48 um, i pick the natural profile here so we have this uh, color checker going back to the oops going back to the image and now turning on the conversion again and what happened now oh the problem was in the qigong image which i loaded before the model holds the camera 180 degree 
I hold the, 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 the uh, spider check 180 degree to the camera, so I had to turn the grid. And modifying and creating the grid, there is a point behind set colors. It's called create modify. We uh, yeah, we will need it uh, more often. Oh, why is the menu not closing? I don't know. Something happens, which is not normal. Never had this before. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, anyways, um, so we have an error to turn the color grid on the image. So I turn it two times, 180 degree, and now everything is looking fine. So now the color grid, which we have put here as a safe colors, uh, as a reference uh, yeah, template, are already, uh, are already adapted to this photo. And you can see by disabling the eye symbol, you can see the before and the after image. Maybe let's check again. This is the image I loaded, how it comes out of camera. And this is the color correction. So if you want to see how it looks like on a different image, let's load a file here and maybe going to the shoe folder again and say, let's load this one. So you see the same color correction is here on the shoe, which is calculated. Okay, um, how to achieve this or how to modify it? Let's go back to the normal section here. Um, the master match on the right side, all the, the, the controls are divided into two sections. One is a lock conversion and one is a target matching. The lock conversion is almost always used if you are working with lock video. So lock video is very desaturated, very low contrast. So it sometimes makes sense to make it in two steps. You can do everything with the master match and the gray axis matching, but uh, sometimes you want to have two different lookup tables uh, for controlling or for, for uh, correcting and uh, have them separately. Then you can make first lock conversion to bring uh, the white point and the black point and the contrast and everything to a normal ratio and then do the target matching and correct the colors to be neutral or the way you want them looking. But in this webinar, we are talking about neutralizing. We don't have lock footage, so I uh, yeah, collapse it uh, so we don't see it anymore and it's not disturbing. Um, First is the look, LUT strengths. Look, LUT is a, yeah, LUT is a lookup table. Um, it's, yeah, it's a color correction in the end. If it's too strong for you or from yeah, some artistic reasons or whatever, you, you think uh, you have to reduce it a little bit, you can reduce it. So on the left is no correction, on the right is 100% correction. For today, we leave it at 100% correction. The LUT smoother, we come later and then show you or maybe yeah maybe i can show you now yeah no that's a good example um here are some artifacts which are not 100 percent even it can happen if um especially if the color charts have a lot of colors like here which are very similar so for example this brown is very similar to this brown. This dark green is very similar to the dark blue. Some gray tones are similar. On the left side, some blue turquoise tones are similar to the blue turquoise on the right. And if they are very close together, depending where the light is coming from, which reflections of the room you see in the color chart, it can yeah, make some artifacts in the matching. And if you go to the, yeah, you, you won't see it uh, in an image uh, yeah, because it's very subtle. Um, but if you want to have it uh, perfect uh, or yeah, smoothen it out, then you can go to the um, look visualization. And then um, you can increase the look smoother and you see how they disappear. I hope it's uh, good enough through the web go to webinar. Um, or transfer if, if you can see it clearly. I reset it again. So you see if there are some spots here or in the keys area, you see here some spots, it's not very even. You can smooth it a little bit. So it's looking perfect again. It's good to Back see. Back 
yeah, back to our um, yeah, image, which is to match. Um, yeah, here on the top right, you have a navigator. You can press fit, and it fits into the screen as the yeah, same as one to one. If you want to look in full size, as you recognize, some of these frames are dotted, and some are go a full line. The dotted ones are colors which are defined as neutral colors. So when I made these templates, or if when you make your own templates in the set colors create modify, there are two different pipettes, one for the neutral colors and one for the colored colors. So or the colorful colors. And um, for the neutral colors, it's uh, important for the software to know what's neutral because the algorithm to correct the image has several steps. The match gray axis, the harmonized saturation, and the master match algorithm. The master match algorithm is an algorithm which takes the before colors, the yeah, which is uh, to match, and then the reference colors, and make a calculation. We are doing the mass from the before to after color. And all the colors which are not defined, which means all the colors which are not in the color chart here, are interpolated, and that's uh, yeah, very very powerful uh, algorithm for interpolating the colors. But sometimes it works even better the interpolation if we make a gray axis uh, matching. So gray axis matching, it's uh, yeah, it's like a white balance, but not only a white balance. It's a white balance over all these gray fields. It's not. It's a yeah, gray. Uh, it's a white balance on the dark ones, on the gray ones, and on the white ones. So to show you um, a little bit more about this um, yeah, gray axis matching, let's go here uh, again. There are two more points. Uh, it's keep zero and 255 and the multi-level white balance. If you're going to my graphic in, in Photoshop again, we are talking about the keep zero 255. So if we have, let's say we have, uh, in, in my example now we have uh, five or six uh, neutral colors, but let's say we have only three. We have a dark one, a mid gray, and a bright gray one. So like a, a white balance would be a straight line only through one of these dots where you pick with the pipette, uh, the, with the eyedropper tool, uh, the, the uh, you know, gray field. But if we have more than that, we are interpolating between these fields if, if they are not on a line. And if you don't have an exact 100% neutral white uh, field in your color chart and not a 100% black one, then we can artificially in the software add ones so it's calculated towards 0 and 255. What's the difference or why do we have both options? The option with 0 255, so every color it's calculated towards the end of the spectrum, it's always helpful if you don't want that your highlights burn out or your, your um, blacks are clipped, then everything it's calculated towards the end. But if you maybe sometimes it's, it's looking more natural if, if some highlights are clipping or very bright, especially if there are lights in the image, then it can look more natural if you leave the option out and uh, the last uh, values are calculated based on the brightest value we have in the image and the lower values are calculated based on the darkest point we have defined in master match. But this calculation is all only made with the, um, with the uh, fields which are defined with the dotted lines with the neutral eyedropper tool. Okay, um, so we talked about this and now we talk about multi-level white balance. Um, normally in a reference card, these gray fields should be 100% ideally gray, but in some reference cards, they are not 100% ideally gray. Sometimes there are optical brightness in, in the color reference cards. Um, sometimes they are not exactly printed. Um, yeah, I found some color reference cards where these uh, fields are not 100% uh, correctly white. 
or, or neutral, and then the algorithm can calculate them as they are neutral. So in this, uh, yeah, if I deactivate and activate, you won't recognize the real difference because these are pretty neutral. And also, yeah, depending on the colors, uh, we see, yeah, we see 255, it's not oftentimes, it's not a big difference. And even the master match algorithm is uh, working after each, uh, after the gray axis match. The harmonized saturation, it's an option almost, yeah, you use it almost also with uh, log footage um, because it brings the level of saturation uh, of the to match image to the reference image and log footage is oftentimes very unsaturated. Uh, so yeah, the algorithm can increase its saturation automatically until it's uh, matching to the reference image. Here it's not a big difference because it calculates the average saturation or the saturation of the saturated parts. And yeah, it's pretty much similar saturated, so nothing happens. And in the end, the master match algorithm is doing the color correction of the different, yeah, the di different fields. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see there is a small line with a similar color to the color of the color card. And this color, which is a little bit different, it's the color from the reference card. So if I don't use a master match algorithm, you see how different the reference card is still after the gray axis match. If I even turn out the gray axis match, you see the line is yeah, more different because that's the original image and the, the uh, colored line, that's the reference card. Uh, yeah, that, that's the color of the reference card. And if I turn it on, you see what the gray axis match is doing. And then you see what the master match is doing. And after the master match, you see everything is completely to the reference card. Okay. Um, next one. Um, now we are. Yeah, I, I already showed you the um, the, the before after difference. So that's a color correction. Um, we can. I can also show you the difference about uh, our neutral natural and neutral spectrometer. So if I set all the fields and everything uh, yeah, is aligned, I can simply choose the other template. And then you see that the colors measured with the spectrometer, that's the real colors of the color card. And the more natural ones are the also exact colors, but they are yeah, with some highlights calculated into the color. So I load this again because it's yeah for me it's looking a little bit more natural because every everywhere in life you see highlights. So our eyes and our brain is used to see highlights and for me it's looking a little bit more natural seeing also the highlights in a calibrated image. Well um so next step now we made the color correction. What can we do with it? Of course, we can export it as a lookup table or as an ICC profile. And here at the top, you see we have some export uh, options. We can uh, we can save the log conversion load, which is the section which I collapsed. We can save only the color matching LUT, which is the section here which I described to you, and we can saves the combined LUT. The combined LUT in this case, it's the same like the color matching LUT because um, it's uh, yeah, it's not doing anything, the log conversion. So in the end, both are the same. The combined LUT is a LUT, uh, yeah, if you make a log conversion and the target matching, then the combined LUT, it's yeah, both LUTs stacked after each other. So you see here a slight difference in the skin tones, um, that's coming, I, I'm, I'm sure it's coming from the LUT smoother. So if you increase the LUT smoother a little bit more, it's only a thing of a brightness. It's, it's not a really different color, but um, yeah, as you increase the LUT, I, I overdo it a little bit. If, as you increase the LUT smoother too much, you see there are slightly differences uh, yeah, because it's, uh, 
if it's smoothening, it's also uh, considering some areas around the uh, real color which is picked. And if you bring it back to zero, then these are the same. Okay, since, uh, yeah, maybe firstly, uh, first apply a lookup table to Photoshop. Either I can export a color matching LUT and load it in Photoshop, but with Photoshop, we have an integration, so you, we can just push the color match LUT to Photoshop, but uh, I don't want to push it to my graphics. Uh, I loaded a yeah, uh, shoe image from the same series, so yeah, same camera, same moment, same light, same everything, and I go to master match and say, I want to send the color match load to Photoshop. And now it should be arrived. So here it is. It opens a color lookup table and puts the color correction into this color lookup table. And you see the correction in Photoshop. So now next, we want to see this correction in Lightroom. For Lightroom, we have to go one step more. So first we need a color match lot. Let's save it as um, shoe correction. Save. And before we can load a lookup, we, we can't load a lookup table in Lightroom, but uh, that's also not what we want. We want to load a profile because uh, we want to correct the image in a profile and then work with presets and everything like we are used to. And before we are having it in a profile, we have to go to Adobe Photoshop again. Um, yeah, please take care that you don't have selected a mask. In this case, that's a color lookup table and the mask is selected. But if we go to the camera raw filter now and the mask is black and white, it, it do some calculations in black and white. So you can have anything open, but be sure to have uh, one yeah, color layer or a normal layer selected. And then you can go to filter, Adobe Camera Raw filter. Um, it opened on my second screen, so I pulled it up. Okay, that's the Adobe Camera Raw filter. And now here use on the right side, the two circles, that's the symbol for all the presets you have. And like a preset, you could create a preset by this create preset button, but if you want to make a profile, you have to hold the option key while pressing this icon. So I hold the option key, press this icon, and then a dialogue is going on, uh, is, is opening. So let's name it uh, shoe correction Lightroom. And here we can load the color lookup table so it's the shoe correction cube file. Um, Lightroom supports cube files. That's the reason why I exported a cube file. In master match, you can also export um, 3DL or ICC profiles. Um, so, but here we exported the cube file because Lightroom needs a cube file, uh, cube32. That's the format, uh, which means it has 32 samples, which is set here. And we set it to sgrgb that's uh, also something which is uh, important um master match maybe let's quickly go back to master match um master match has is always working or is always converting the to match image to the reference image so if your reference, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it converts the reference to the to match image. So if the to match image is sRGB, then the reference image is sRGB. If you load an image yourself uh, in whatever Adobe RGB, you be sure to load an Adobe RGB as a reference and an Adobe RGB as a to match image. For our uh, safe templates, all templates which we have in the settings menu, which are inside of master match, um, these are all automatically converted to the to match image. So if you're working with Adobe RGB, then our reference image will automatically internally convert it to Adobe RGB and also the lookup table, um, the RGB values of a lookup uh, of, of an image are different for the same color if the profile is different. So the same red for your eye has a different value in sRGB as it is in Adobe RGB. And that's the reason why it's important that uh, 
first you know which image you're loading and on the other hand you select these um yeah the color space the same that you used if you made the lookup table so srgb is fine since my images are in srgb so let's press ok and i think that's it we can cancel here again the only thing is we have to restart Lightroom uh, to load the profiles again. So if there are any questions in the chat, Boris, maybe you can tell me while I'm restarting Lightroom. No, at the moment we are pretty fine. There are no questions to answer at this point, you say. Okay, so if you have any questions, just just type it in the chat. Uh, yeah, and then Boris will have a look uh, from while to while. And uh, yeah, sometimes I interrupt and ask uh, if there are questions, and yeah, I'm happy to answer them. So back to Lightroom again. So you can yeah, you find the, the color profiles under this icon here, and now we have this shoe correction Lightroom. You see it here. If I Hover, you see the correction, and if I press it, the correction is applied to Lightroom. So can go back to master match and see the correction. Maybe I quickly restart master match to get rid of the drop down minutes, which are not closing again. <laughs> so back again, this is the same correction in Lightroom. If you make a profile and or if you have the same conditions for example you have a product photography machine you have any other product photography setup or any studio environment where your light and background and reflectors are always the same setting you can make one profile import it to lightroom and then um, there is a possibility to choose this profile when always when importing images that the profile will apply it always when importing images so going forth and back from master match to lightroom to adobe photoshop you don't need it for every single image you you make it one time as long as you shoot uh, your images or the series uh, in the same conditions um, then you can apply the same profile to all images okay um that's how we brought it to Lightroom. And yeah, next thing, um, yeah, this, this was an example I made uh, yeah, as a JPEG image. And uh, yeah, now let's uh, maybe do the same workflow with an uh, raw image. Uh, yeah, thanks to Sascha Hüttenhain again for providing some nice images for this uh, examples. Um, yeah, we have this image here. It's it's uh, yeah completely neutral. Um, I reset it with a shortcut Command Shift R to be sure it's neutral. Yeah, but it is neutral. Nothing has changed. So let's export the image to my webinar folder. And now I can open. I can I can go to Master Match and open this image. So this is what I exported. And again, colors are looking pretty ugly. Everything is in real time. So maybe disable it quickly to not being disturbed by the real time calculation. Only make it roughly, then we can zoom in a little bit. Now everything is looking wrong. First, we have the wrong color card, so we pick the Color uh, spider checker photo again, the natural version. And now we are going to create modify again and we turn it until it fits. So we turn it 90 degree. So these uh, yeah, dotted squares are on the neutral colors and yeah, you see it's fitting. The reason why I didn't put some reference fields on the other fields of the color card is that these colors are pretty similar and most of the times the algorithm works better and more accurate if you have less points if if they are 
yeah, 99% or 98% similar and you have all the reference points, sometimes it makes more artifacts than if you uh, yeah, have, have less because we have a white one here. Oh, here you see the mistake which Boris mentioned in the beginning, don't touch the color fields. And even if you don't touch them really on the, on the one end, you don't want to have uh, yeah, your, your fingerprint uh, on the color chart sooner or later, but also, at the moment, the reference in the reference image, it's white, and in the uh, to match image, it's not white. It's it's um, beige, like the finger or fingernail. And if we have a look here, you see, uh, depending how ah, I, I switched out the color correction, now I switched on, and as you see here, you see a lot of artifacts. That's because the beige of the finger is matched white and and as soon as the beige gets bright enough uh, yeah it's it's getting white here and uh, yeah how to avoid it um yeah that's the topic of the series number 3 of the webinar but um yeah for today we want to have a solution so i quickly show you the solution if you are under the create modify we have a trash bin icon here where you can delete single points of a color chart so you can just click the trash bin delete it and now you see problem is solved everything looking fine again. I can maybe let's uh, load it again as uh, the same one. So it's here again. Some, yeah, now I quickly recognized no problem, but here is another reason why you always should look into the LUT visualization. So if you look into the LUT visualization, you see here in the, here you see some spots and here you see also cross where it's uh, yeah where you see it's it's not a smooth transition you see it's artifacts and here you see also some bright dots so LUT visualization always has to look smooth so if you go to the LUT smoother you can correct it but it's not better so you can let's let's have a look here put the LUT, LUT smoother back so LUT, the LUT smoother makes it more smooth but it makes it not perfect. So it's still matching beige to white. It's uh, the, the transitions are smoother, but it's not uh, changing that the colors are wrong. So in the end, we go here and kill this point again. So what if, if you modified the chart here and you say, oh, well, let's try out the spectrometer version of the neutrals or whatever if you work with uh, camera matching and you have uh, several camera profiles and you want to quickly switch between some of them you don't want to switch and then you see the artifacts again and then you have to delete the point again you want to switch between the images uh, or between the the profiles or the correction profiles with directly seeing the difference. And that's why there is a shortcut. You can also find the shortcuts under the in the information window. You see all shortcuts here. But I know I tell you one of the most important shortcut if you deleted points or if you modified the reference chart, you can go to the plus symbol again. You want to choose the spider checker photo, but before choosing, press the option key. So if you hold the option key and press it, you see this is a neutral, the spectrometer neutral version. And if I want to switch back, I can go to the natural version. If I hold the option key, I can toggle without this, yeah, with, with uh, keeping the, the, the changes. But if I forget to press the option key, let me quickly change with forgetting the option key. Boom. Now all the normal reference colors, which are from the template, are here again. And I have to delete this point again um yeah for the correction in lightroom i want to have the natural version so this is my correction um and maybe i want to show you another thing if you want to go with the neutral or with, with the spectrometer version maybe i load this again and it's it's look a little bit not so colorful maybe a little bit lower in contrast the brightness is different and so on so next to modifying the single points uh, by removing them, you can also modify the impact of the hue, the impact of the saturation, and the impact of the brightness of every single point. So if you go there and I, 
and mark one point, you can change the saturation difference of this point. So if you put the saturation to the left, then it's the original saturation of the to match image. If it's at 100%, it's the, from the reference card. So if you want to bring back the original brightness and contrast, so all the brightness changes of all the different gray fields makes the contrast. So if you want to decrease or, or reduce the brightness change from the to match uh, or, or the impact from the reference image, you can hit the command key or the uh, control key on Windows while dragging and rectangle, rectangle uh, through all these points you want to mark. And this way I marked all points together and now I reduce the brightness difference. So now I only, if I before after, you see it's only hue and saturation changes, but no brightness changes anymore. If I put the brightness 50% again, it changes the brightness half the way. If I put it to 100, with right click, you can go to the original position. If I put it back to 100%, now it's a brightness of the color chart, of the reference card. So, um, yeah, for Lightroom matching, we want to go with the, um, with the natural one again, pressing the option key, not bringing this color back. And yeah, if, you, if I load a new one, I can mark it and I see it's a uh, hue 100%, saturation 100, brightness 100. So all keys are resetted to the 100% percent position. So I leave it as it is because that's, for me, a good starting point in Lightroom. Maybe you ask yourself, why can I increase the saturation above 100% or the brightness above 100%? Um, the reason you will see maybe in an in a other webinar series um, next to the um, color chart mode, the software has also a free point mode where I can pick points to match and uh, yeah, in the reference image and into match image. You can use any image if you don't have a reference card, pick points and match them and all other, other, other colors are interpolated. And there's a pixel different uh, mode where you have um, before and after images. So if you're going to whatever, to social media and some color graders show some before and after images, you can extract the look from them and you can you can say, oh, I like the extracted look, but I like uh, the color correction to be more saturated or a little bit brighter or darker, or maybe their look from the lock make, makes the image too bright and you reduce the brightness and increase the saturation. So you can play around with these corrections if you want to apply them only partly. Okay, that's it. Um, back, to Bringing this back to Lightroom, we're exporting the color matching LUT and yeah, let's call it um, um, green dress LR for Lightroom. Save it, go back to Photoshop. It's not necessary that you're in the same in image, so just to have open any image uh, so you can open the camera raw filter. Go to the presets again, hold the option key, creating a new preset, let's call it green dress, Lightroom, load the color lookup table, green dress, sRGB is fine. Since I exported it from Lightroom and sRGB, 32 samples, that's a LUT cube file size. We export the cube file, so 32 is also correct. Hit OK, can cancel the camera raw again, have to restart Lightroom again, and then we can apply the profile. Any questions while I'm restarting Lightroom? Um, no, we. Uh, I have answered almost all questions in the meantime. Uh, okay. There's one. Uh, there's one. Um, what about Capture One? Um, Capture One is our next topic. Okay. Good. Perfect. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was thinking about. It. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we have to hurry a little bit. Already nine. Oh, but it's, it's okay. Okay, so um, back to Lightroom. Going to the profiles and see we have this green dress 
and not we applied the profile and if we compare it to master match it's exactly the same okay i think enough lightroom people asked for capture one so let's go to capture one here i have the same image in capture one as you see it's a raw file it's cr3 which is a raw format from canon <clears throat> and the yeah, normal profile, it's yeah, it's a generic EOS R5 profile since it's made with this camera. But um, Capture One uh, uses the, yeah, not uh, not the profile. This image is all already corrected with the profile. But if you want to make a lookup table, we can't stack another profile onto a profile. That's why we have first choose a neutral one so if we go to file system and say i think these three are the same let's say jpeg neutral file then this is neutral and then there are different curves which you can apply if you want to have a neutral neutral like it's coming out of the camera you can uh, choose a linear um, curve but um, yeah it's also possible to to use the standard curve the important thing is that you use the same curve on a, yeah if you apply it on the icc profile with which we generate with master match uh, it should be the same curve uh, which you use to export the image so now we have a neutralized image these are the colors where capture one starts calculating um so let's oh sorry i have Capture one set to German. Yeah, maybe I translate it. So it's file, um, export, export. And yeah, it's set to JPEG. It's sRGB. Um, everything is fine. I think I can export it. And now I can, can go to master match and load the file and I think it's with the underscore one. Yeah, that's a neutral one. That's the one from Lightroom. Um, funnily, you see different uh, lens corrections are applied. Let's load it to master match. And as you see, it's the lens corrections changed, but the um, resulting image is uh, not so different. It's yeah, it's a little bit here because um, the fields I have to correct a little bit because of the lens correction. The position is a little bit different. Can also look at 100%. So sometimes, uh, yeah, since the previous calculated a little bit quicker, it's it's uh, it's not noise here on the right. If you if you go to one to one, you see it's the structure of the dress. So no problem at all. Just uh, want to say if you think uh, in the recordings that's uh, yeah some noise or so. It's it isn't. It's it's uh, everything is good. The correction is looking good, and um, yeah, now we can export again. We want to have the color match load again, but now the difference. Let's call it again green dress. And now we don't want to save it as a cube. So you can open the file extension dialog or the file format dialog. So next to cube, we have 3DL, ICC, and MGA. MCE, ICC is a profile. So let's save it as a profile. And now, so yeah. Capture one, um, I think it has to be restarted too because it reads the profile some from the operating system profile folder. So let's quit it. And then I open a finder and go to the yeah, webinar folder. Then I exported the ICC profile. Yeah, it's called greendress.icc. That's what I just exported out of master match. And then I go to the profiles folder. On Mac, it is um, library color sync profiles. I think on Windows, you can install it via right click. But yeah, Boris, do you know the, the uh, folder pass on Windows? Yes, of course. Uh, it's Windows System 32 spool driver colors. Yeah. Windows. This. Yeah, please. Yeah. 
continue. These are these are the common folders for for color profiles. Uh, that's a standard. And if you place them there, then uh, yeah, capture one and uh, yeah, the read the profiles from this location. So let's start capture one again, and it reads the profiles. And now we can go to the ICC profile and um, sonstige. I think it means other or something in the English yeah. version. Yeah. And then you, yeah, green dress, that's our green dress. And that's the way how you work in Lightroom. So if you choose a different curve for like linear, then it's, of course, it's wrong. But if you would have exported the image in linear, it would be correct. Uh, one additional information for the profiles. On Mac, there is always a second uh, profile folder in the user library. The user library is hidden because um, there are the uh, uh, profiles only used by this individual user. You see, that's the just an addition. Okay. Um, yeah, the uh, user library. If you you can, I think the uh, in English it's go, and then you hit yep. the option go, go. key, and then then you see here this library appearing and disappearing if you press the option key and then you come to the user library and uh, yeah send the same pass you're 100 percent right okay um another thing what we maybe should mention is that um lightroom works in a white gamut color profile so no matter if you are loading a raw file or jpeg with adobe rgb and srgb or in white gamut rgb all color values are calculated in a white gamut color space and this means uh, if you have a preset uh, in in lightroom um let's go back to lightroom again so if you have uh the develop yeah if you make first your profiling and then you can uh, apply a preset and even if if after the preset a fashion preset the colors are not 100 percent neutral because you want them this way it makes sense to make a calibration before so your preset looks always the same but for capture one you have to consider if you make a preset and makes a calibration and presets based on calibrated uh, images you have to consider that cache capture one preset and all the the controls and capture one are doing the mass based on the color profile in the image so if you have a preset which is changing a certain red then it has different effect on an srgb as on an adobe rgb i think yeah it's it's good to know that uh, so sometimes if you're wondering uh, handling with different images and different uh, color spaces uh, if there are differences you know where they are coming from. Okay, um, we have talked about Lightroom, we have talked about Capture One, but if we are going back to product photography, we are today we are also talking about product video. So let's talk about video. That's why I have uh, yeah, made the, the same clip with the uh, Spider Checker 48 and the shoe. Um, I not only shot photos, uh, yeah, we also shot uh, some video clip where we put the color card inside the machine and then we remove the color card so we can make the color correction first based on this image. And then we, after we made the color correction, we can, yeah cut the clip and so you have a nice video spin with a color corrected shoe you see it from all angles without the color card so either you take the effort to export a single frame but maybe let's do maybe yeah, let's let's uh, do the shortcut so i can quickly make a screenshot of this image let's make a screenshot Going back to master match, with uh, master match, you can just go off to the to match image and press command V. So you quickly insert it from the clipboard. Now everything looking ugly again, same procedure, quickly putting it to the corners and loading the 48 natural profile 
and turning it again, again, again. No, every position is fine. Now we can turn on the corrections again. So we see corrections looks the same like uh, yeah, we, we did with the shoe in Photoshop. And now we can export it as a lookup table again. Let's say shoe video. And now we don't want an ICC profile, profile since uh, Premiere uses cube format um, or 3DL. Export it, going back to Premiere. And now the color corrections are called in an effect called Lumetri. Lumetri Farbe means Lumetri color. Sorry, having it in German again. It's under the effects. If you say Lumetri, oops, Lumetri. Did I make a typo? Lumetri Farbe. Ah, Lumetri Farbe, yeah. So you find it in the effects, Lumetri color in English. You can drag it, drop it to your clip, and then I can drag and drop another one so you see it, drag and drop it. So you have two effects here. No, I delete one again. Nothing happened because I didn't change any settings, but here there is an input LUT and an, another uh, color grading LUT uh, later, but yeah. Uh, I always use the, the input load uh, for the calibration. So search my hard drive, um, going to the shoe video cube file and having the video corrected. So now we can, yeah, I don't do it now, but uh, in general, you can uh, cut the clip and have a nice color corrected video clip to see same colors which you did with your shoe here in Photoshop. So photo and video are looking the same. Perfect. Any more questions? Um, no, uh, as we are a little bit in overtime, uh, a few already left, but they are satisfied. So uh, all colors have been, uh, all questions have been taken off um so have been answered so yeah um <laughs> there's another question to come but we will do this afterwards so i'm think you're done so i can can take over now again for yes. a few minutes so give me one second here we are okay and you can see my screen now and um, we had some people asking about, uh, yeah, what about color management? Where do I learn it and so on? And what we have created uh, from a perspective of photographers, but also taking care of videographers, we have a so-called Spider ebook. It's available in English, German, and French. And um, it's six chapters about color management, capture calibration, monitor calibration, fine tuning, monitors, printer profiling, soft proofing. You can read it as a book and you can, as it is a PDF, you can look up for reference as you can search it. Um, there's a little link, you go on that link. Um, you don't have to write it down. You will find this in the uh, recording as well. And there's a little um, form you fill out and then you get an email with the download link. Okay, that's uh, one thing, another is where do you get additional information about the data color products? And uh, this is, you go to our website and uh, you have the uh, support under contact or and support uh, our colleagues working on this at the moment. And then you will find this support site where you can just submit a ticket, you say, that's it. And this brings us to the end. And Robin has already mentioned at the beginning, we have um, this picture instruments with Robin, we have created uh, little nice promotions for you. First thing is about the spider checker photo. We have for the European and the UK market, we have a discount code, uh, a rebate code, you can enter in our webshop. Sorry, not for outside markets. 
And what is important to know, um, this gives you the product. And when you have the product and you activate the product, you will get a second discount code. This discount code is for MasterMatch, and this will allow you uh, to save 149 uh, euro or uh, British pound 132. And so um, that's important to know. You have to purchase the product, our spider checker product first, one of the list, or a product where the spider checker is part of, and then you activate and you get the additional discount for Picture Instruments web shop for Mastermatch. And for those customers who say, okay, I don't need it, um, the web shop uh, from, Master, uh, from Picture Instruments, um, we have uh, a discount code from Robin, it's called Data Color 99, that will give you a 99 euro off, uh, which is around 85 British pound, depending on the current exchange rate. Um, Robin, uh, can you tell me if this, uh, if your shop works worldwide, so this code can be used also from different countries? Could you confirm? Yes, or uh, it can be used from every country. Um, yeah, our uh, shop uh, changes or calculates the prices uh, depending on the currency uh, you want to pay. Okay. Um, the reason why I ask this is because we had, uh, in preparation of the webinars, we received a lot of emails from people from different time zones. So if you see this in the recording, hurry up. The voucher code is not there for every time it will be terminating in a few weeks. Okay, that's what we can hear, have here with our webinar today. And you see, I hurry up a little bit because I'd like to point out for the next webinars, a few people have asked things that will come in the next webinars. So register if you have not done already, and we will see each other in the next webinar. Therefore, it's now for me time to say thank you.